Welcome back to Simply Fishing. I'm David, and today is going to be episode two in our series on how to get started on fishing. Um, last episode, if you haven't got a chance to watch it, please go back and check it out. It's how to get started on a very small budget. Today, I want to go over basic hooks. These are the hooks that I commonly use pretty much all the time. So I chose nine of the most common hooks that I'll use and these go a combination of fresh water and salt water. Most, some of them can be used for both. So we're gonna go through the hooks one at a time and I'll tell you why I use it and what I use it for. Let's begin. is a simple small bait holder hook so I'll put that in my hand you can kind of see the size of it and if you'll notice on this hook it's got a nice sharp point there but on the back side it's hard to see there's two little barbs one there and one there what that does is that actually helps hold your bait on this hook can be used for a couple different things this is a very common hook when you're trying to catch bait or catch really small bluegill you can put a piece of worm, a piece of bread on there, and that's where those two barbs kind of come in handy. If you're using live bait, then you can put the live bait on there and it hooks on the back, or, and I've got some shows, you can actually use jigs, and it'll help hold your worm. So the jig would simply go on there, and it feeds around through. And the hook will pop up through the top of it just like that. So you got your nice sharp point, but those two barbs actually grab onto that worm and help hold it solid on there. So that would be a nice simple little, if you're doing speck fishing or something like that, bluegill, that's a nice little freshwater lure. You can actually use that hook with, uh, if you're going bait fishing in salt water too. That's a common use for that small hook right there. Um, I use the rubber worm because I will use that same worm on a couple different displays to show you different things. but. This is just one type of hook. It's got a slight bend to the hook. It's not what would be considered a circle hook, but it does have a slight bend to the shaft that allows it to set in the corner of the mouth. Nice and easy, very similar to a circle hook. Like I say, got a nice sharp point, slight curve to it. Great bait hook to use for catching bait or very small bluegill. Let's set that one aside. The next hook we're going to talk about is another small hook, commonly used more freshwater or for bait. That can be used in saltwater for bait, um, more commonly used for bluegill. This is a hook, one of my favorite hooks for doing bluegill. It's got a nice long shank hook to it. The shank is the back side of the hook right here. It's a smooth shank, but it's really long. The reason I like this one for bluegill is it allows you to get hold of the hook. They don't swallow the whole hook down. It catches in their mouth and you have the shank where you can get a hold of it because they have such a small mouth and be able to get the hook back out. Um, this hook is really good, nice because you can take it and put worms on there. So if you got a live worm, you can simply loop a live worm around and gives you a nice big area to have the worm on there. That way you have some worm looped all the way around from here all the way back to here so it's in there wiggling, creating a motion in the water. That would be my typical bluegill hook. Um, I've used this hook for catching pinfish as well. You can take a little hook like this, put a little tiny piece of shrimp or something on there. It works great for pinfish. Same thing, you're looking at a small fish with a small mouth. It depends on if you're doing fresh water or salt water, but it's easy to get the hook back out of their mouth. So that's a bait hook right there or a small bluegill hook. Very common, very popular. Um, the, both of those hooks came in that kit, little tackle box I showed in the last video. These come in there. So they're very popular in the bluegill small bait fish area. All right, so that is hook number two. What we're going to do now, I'm going to stay with my small hooks. I'm going to slowly progress up in size. The next one is a jig head hook. So this one, you'll see, is not much bigger than the last hook we set. It's the same size hook, but it has the jig head on it. What that jig head does, it does two different things. One, it gives us a little bit of weight. So when we're casting it out there, a little bit of weight helps. 
help throw it better, accurate, further. It also, if you look right here, there's that same little barb like on the bait hook, that little barb on that jig head is to help hold your lures on. These are very common for speck fishing in freshwater or small bait fish in saltwater. And what you'll do is you simply, if you're using a rubber, like I got here, a rubber worm, so it's a little grub, it slides all the way up to the head, and that little barb that was right up under there is now embedded in that rubber and helps hold it on. And you can tie your line right through the eyelet there. It gives it a little bit more color, gives it a little bit more weight, and it does affect the way it swims when you're reeling it in the water. But it allows it to sink down quicker. You can jig it on the bottom. If you're going for speck, you'll drop it over the side of the boat, let it drop down. You can jig it. You got your hook sticking up so when they bite and come for that worm, coming up like that, and that fish comes up to bite it, that hook's going to catch them. If you're using it in salt water, a lot of times you can do a grub like this, or like I'll take a piece of, take a shrimp, a little small shrimp, break it, put the shrimp on there just like you would this grub right here. It's just a piece of shrimp on there. The JK gives it some weight and gives it a little color. Flip it around the docks, work for sheep's head, flounder, stuff like that. So that is a jig head hook. Very common hook. You use it all the time. All right. So that would be hook number three in this series. And I'm going to take that off. I'm going to stick with the jig head. And now we're going to go simply with a larger jig head. So this is a red head. Well, last time I used the white, this one's just to give you a different look. This is a red one. And you can see on this one, got the barbs, just like on the last one, to help hold your bait. But this one has a short shank hook. They make the same one that's actually a longer shank, and it depends on the bait you're using. And you can see the comparison between the two, size-wise and everything else. So this one is really good, especially the long shanks for shrimp in the salt water. Because if you get the long shank, you can fit on the, rip the head off the shrimp, feed it through, feed the body through, and that becomes the head, and you can pull it along. Just for an example, I will use the same grub again, but you would take your shrimp, and you would feed it on there. And obviously the shrimp will be quite a bit bigger, but the shrimp will dangle off just like that, and the rest of the shrimp will come all the way up over that. So you would have that live shrimp with that sticking off. You can actually use a bigger version of a grub. They have the tubes that would fit on these. Very versatile, very useful. Um, they work great. Also, if you're fishing with uh, crabs, small crabs, you can put the crab on there. It gives a little bit of weight to it. Helps it drop down to the bottom. You can jig it, nice size hook. Um, these, I'm going, 90% of the time I'm using these, I'm going to be in salt water, um, working flats, working uh, shrimp on them, crabs, flounder, sheep's head, redfish. That'll be my more common type on one of these. And so that was just a bigger jig head look. And with these jig heads, like you see both of them here again, I chose red and then a white with a red eye. In my tackle box, I have them in multiple colors. They make them in multiple colors depending on the type of water you're in. The most common will be the white. The white shows up pretty much everything. I like the red as well, but I have them in orange, yellow, green, I have them in multiple colors. Just depends on the water conditions you're in and what you think will show up the best. All right, sticking with weighted hooks. This one is called a bottom sweeper. There's different variations. This one's actually a name brand bottom sweeper jig. And as you can see, it sits, it's got a balance right there. The way it's designed, it's weighted. It's got the eyelet there where you tie your line, hook comes around. And instead of the jig head, where it's got the head up here, it's weighted on the bottom. This one you use the same thing, crab, shrimp, put your piece of bait right here. Commonly use salt water around bridges and docks. You cast it out there and the design of the hook is to it would sit just like that on the bottom. That way when you got your bottom feeding fish, like your uh, flounder and stuff, and they come up and bite that bait that's sitting on top, that hook is sitting right up on top. So when they come to bite, that hook is sitting right on top of gravel. Um, they're really good balance. They have multiple sizes. They have large and small. I actually have some of them in my box that are that size hook with the weight the same. And then I have the larger ones. I have the two different sizes I carry. Same thing, you get them in multiple colors. Whites are common. I got the orange, I got some pinks. And using our little grub again, if I had a piece of shrimp, I could take a shrimp, pinch the head off the shrimp feed it down on there to where that shrimp is sitting there and that tail's wiggling. 
So that's gonna sit there on bottom and that shrimp tail is sitting there wiggling on bottom. So something will see the movement and come up to grab. And that's when you hook them. So that is my bottom sweeper jig right there. So that takes us through my common weighted hooks. The next one I'm actually gonna go old school on this hook right here because I like it. This hook is the hook I grew up using. This, and a lot of y'all might not recognize it, some of y'all will, it's a worm hook. It's got a couple barbs on the back side for holding the bait. And those barbs are simply back there and they can grab onto your worm. And it's got the little spring that hooks onto the hook right there. Small little weight in the front, not much weight, just a touch. And what that was used for, this was the hook back in the day. And what you do is you find your worm, like this worm's ribbed on top, smooth on bottom. So we know that's the bottom side of the worm. You actually want this to come in here and we would feed it through. And I say, when you're doing this, don't get in a rush. Take your time because you want that to feed right through the middle of that worm. And you push that all the way up, right up near that eyelet. And basically just kind of like that, you just feed it on there. The hook comes out the top that hooks on there. What that's designed to do is as you're pulling that worm through the grass, that's going to deflect weeds and stuff to help keep it a weedless. That's the old school style of weedless hook. So that's trying to keep your hook from getting hooked in all the grass and the weeds. Works pretty good. When the fish comes up and hits it, the fish is going to come from behind to bite it. When that fish bites it, their lip's going to push that down and that way that barb can hook them in the mouth. Just like that. And like I say, I still use these hooks. Uh, hard to find them nowadays. I like them because they're really simple, easy to use. Um, no hook is 100% weedless. They have the newer design now, which I'm gonna show you next. It's a different style weedless design for rubber worms. These work great for multiple style traditional worms, tubes, bass assassins. You know, they pretty much work for about any kind of rubber lure. You can work them with the shads and everything else. That's the old school. The newer one, more common one that you're gonna see now will be this one right here. And these are for all your artificial baits, uh, tubes, bass assassin, rubber worm, traditional rubber worms. That is the most common weedless hook right now. You can see the different shape to it, especially when we put them side by side. The shapes are completely different. So the way this one works is you actually want to measure your hook a little bit. So you put it there, you can measure it, we know that's coming to about there. So I know that one's gonna be about there on that worm. So once we get that measurement, feed that in the top. We want it to come out. So you go about maybe quarter inch. Look at your shank. You'll know that one's actually a small shank, so I need to go less than a quarter inch. So I'm just gonna go right about that first rib there. Bring it up and through right up near the eye, that also helps cover your knot. So like I say, we measured it earlier. So we know right about there, we'll stick that in, poke it all the way through. You can see it sits nice and flat on the body of the worm. So you just take that worm, and you tuck that back in like that over it. By tucking it back over it, now your worm is protecting the hook from the weeds. So when that fish comes up to bite it, it's gonna push that worm down. That's gonna poke right through, and that's where they get hooked. So you just, Nice and easy, line at the top, just like that. That allows it nice smooth design so you can see, run your finger down it, no hook, poking me, so that stays weedless. When you cast up into the weeds, because we all know the best bass are always up in the weeds in that cover. You're not gonna, it's hard to find a good bass out in the open unless you got a nice live bait. Then the bass will come find your live bait. Speaking of live bait, that's what we're getting into next. We have two more hooks left. Both of these I'm going to use for live bait or cut bait. I'm going to sit them both on the table. We have our classic J and our classic circle hook. This is my bait holder J style hook. And you can see the difference. That one's a nice circle. This one's got the shape of a large J. On this one, we'll start with it. Once again, anytime you're holding baits, it's got these barbs on the back side that just kind of help hold them. 
catches the bait. Subtle curve to help the hook set. And the key is when you're using these style hooks to have that circle hook design or that J hook design, like the newer designs. Remember, when you're, the old school was like with these old hooks or these worm hooks, when that fish bites, you gotta set that hook and let it go. With these, you let the fish grab it. But once you feel a little bit, you give a small tug and reel. And once you start reeling, the shape of the hook is gonna find its way right to the corner of the mouth and it's gonna lodge in. So the hook actually helps a lot. You know more ripping the hook out of the fish's mouth and all that, let the hooks, let the fish take it and let the hook set in when you start reeling. But this one is really good if you have shrimp. I like using this one with shrimp and salt water. Um, you can use it in fresh water with minnows and shiners, depending on the size of your bait. Obviously I chose a bigger, I make these in multiple sizes. I chose a bigger one to show up a little bit better on the camera. So I chose a large one. Um, this is my one of my favorite hooks for using with shrimp because I can feed the shrimp through it. The hook will run down the shrimp's body, back up through it. That helps hold the shrimp on. Shrimp are notorious for coming off the hook. That pokes right out of the fish's body, right up through the shell. You got that fish where it will naturally swim, going along, boom. The predator comes up, grabs the bait, hook is set. Um, if you use them with a shiner, you can hook them through the lip, you can hook them through the tail, you can hook them through the back fin, depends on how you want to hook. This hook will work fine for that. Multiple ways to use this hook, depends on what type of bait you're using, what you're doing. Fresh water, salt water, artificial baits, live baits, this is a great overall bait holding hook. You know, the barbs help hold whether it's rubberized or live, the barbs will help hold it on. You got a nice long shank, helps you get it out of the mouth easier. So that's a nice hook. My favorite hook and the most common one I use now is the classic circle hook. Um, by 90% of these hooks, I bought all these at Walmart. Um, this is the Mustad circle hook. I chose a uh, number five here to give a nice size here. And you can notice the shape, how curved that is right there. The point comes around. That also helps with setting that hook in there. That thing will really sharp point, good barb, small, compact, heavy, heavy hook. And you got the nice slight curve it really helps everything to lock in when you're setting that hook like i say just give that slight tug and then real real you hear me on the other videos telling tommy real 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 that's why when you real 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 that hook will set right in the corner of the mouth and then you got the fish then it's a dramatic keeping the tension on the line don't let them shake the hook these hooks when i'm bass fishing with shiner i like these hooks i use a smaller one usually because this one's a fairly heavy hook but if I take the shiner, I, I'm, I'm a top fin hooker right through the underneath the spine, hook them in. The shiner can still swim. That hook's not got the long shank, so it's sitting up there, bobber shortly above it. Sitting there, the fish can swim around, and when that bass grabs it, that circle hook is going to set. Nine out of ten times when he swallows it, that circle hook's going to get a good set on him. Um, when you're using offshore, no matter what you fish for offshore, um, our key strip, whether it's catfish, the sharks, I've used these hook many times, catching many a shark with no lead leader line, just regular monofilament because the way the hook sets in the corner of the mouth, it doesn't give the shark a chance to bite the line. It hooks in the corner of the mouth. Whether it's, I put live shrimp on here, just hooking them through the tail and letting them wiggle. Um, pinfish through the top, uh, mullet, sardines, hooking them through the nose. This hook kind of is my general purpose as my go-to hook is the mustad circle hook. I can use pretty much any live bait I can put on that one, whether it's cup bait or live swimming. And this hook works really well, fresh and salt water. That's probably my favorite hook. My most common one I use is the number four, five, and six are the most common sizes that I'm using because they seem to be good variety. Um, so pretty much that's my little quick explanation of my hooks and why I use the hooks what I use them for, and I'm going to set them all back out here. Um, please, if you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave comments and below these videos. I love, like I say, I, I told you in the last video, I hurt my leg. I'm home for a while, letting it rest, won't be out on the boat. Uh, so we're doing these couple kind of videos like this, and I enjoy comments. I enjoy hearing from you. Also, if you're just curious about how I hurt my leg, the whole story on that, um, I do have another YouTube channel called My Journey to Recovery. It's talking about my torn quadricep tendon 
and what all I've gone through, what I'll be going through, and it's gonna follow me along through the rehab and recovery process. So if you haven't checked that out yet, go ahead. We started that one just to keep people updated on what's going on with my leg. So feel free to follow that one, subscribe to that one. But above all, continue to watch, like, enjoy the videos, share them out to your friends, and go ahead and hit that subscribe button and we will see you on the next one. The next video I'll be doing, we're talking about which rod and reel I use, why I use it, and we'll go from there. And we'll see you next time. Have a good one.